Okay, in this video, we're going to figure out which of these cubic curves right here has no local minimum maximum nor saddle point. In another word, nothing interesting, okay? And you do need to notice the following though. Take a look at these equations, especially the coefficients diagonally like this. Aha, that is the interesting part. It took me a while to come with these uh, equations. But anyway, okay, so how can we do this? Well, we have to talk about what we call the vertex formula. Well, at least I call them to be the vertex formula of a cubic function, all right? So let me just recall for you guys right here. And if you need to see how we derive this formula, just take a look of my previous video. Anyway, the formula is that we have x is equal to negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 3, right? This right here is a vertex formula for a cubic function. Minus 3 ac all over 3a and potentially you may end up with two solutions from here right you may have two you may have one you may have none all right how do we know well all we have to take care of is just take a look of the inside of the square root and you know if the inside of the square root is negative well this wouldn't work in real numbers right that means we don't have anything interesting we wouldn't have any local minimum maximum nor saddle point. So all we want is that b squared minus 3ac to be less than 0 in this case, right? Because if we don't have any vertex, that means the function is always going to go up, right? It doesn't become flat at all, all right? So now we just have to go ahead and just plug in the coefficients according to each equation into this expression and work it out, all right? So let's go ahead and write down, here are the a values, right, the coefficients, and then uh, b, c, and d. I know d doesn't matter, but you know, let's just put it down, why not? Anyway, let's take a look at the first one. We have to get b squared minus 3ac, so we will have 3 squared first, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 3 squared minus 3, a is negative 6, and then c in our case is the coefficient L of x, which is 1, so times 1. Work this out, you know this is 3 squared, which is 9, and then this is plus 18, so this is positive 27. Well, it's positive. When you have the positive value for the discriminant, right, that means you end up with a plus minus version. That means you have two, right, two vertices. That means you have a one local minimum and one local maximum, right? One local minimum, one local maximum. Anyway, I will leave that to you guys, but this is not the answer to our question because it does have something interesting. Now, let's do the second one. Well, I will have to use this as the B value now. So we have negative 6 squared minus 3 times A, which is 4, times C in our case right here is 3. This is 36. 3 times 4 times 3 is also 36. 36 minus 36, we get 0. When we have the discriminant equal to zero, that means this part is zero, and we only have one value right there, right? One x value. That means this curve actually has a saddle point, because that point right there, it's not minimal, it's not maximum, right? So this right here has a saddle point. But this is not the answer to this question. I'm looking for nothing, all right? OK, let's do the, sec uh, the third one right here. Let's put out b squared, which is, once again, Right here, it's 4 squared minus 3 times a, which is 1, and then times c, which is negative 6. This is 16, and we will add 18 after that. So this is going to be 34, right? Yes, and then this is positive. It's the same as the first situation. This is rather interesting, right? Because you have uh, one minimum, one maximum, right? Local minimum, local maximum. And you know D has to be the answer, otherwise somebody just messing around with us. So, but anyway, let me show you. So right here, the B value is 1, so we have 1 squared minus 3 times A, which is this 3, times C, which is this 4. And now let's take a look. 1 minus this times this times that is 36. 1 minus 36 is negative 35, and this is less than 0. Well, we calculate the discriminant is negative, and if you plug into here, well, this is not going to work out, right? So, 
we wouldn't have any vertex at all. There's nothing interesting. This equation has no local minimum. It has no local maximum. It has no set of point. But it is the answer to our question right here. All right? So hopefully this illustrates the idea of why we care about this discriminant, right, for the cubic curve. And that's it.